What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to build a limit calculator with a graphical user interface in Python using TK Inter. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to build a limit calculator in Python today with a graphical user interface. Now, the idea of calculating or evaluating limits is that you have some expression like one divided by n or one divided by x. And of course, we cannot divide by zero. So if I say one divided by zero, that is undefined. But what we can do is we can ask the question, what value would this expression approach if n goes towards zero. So what would happen one divided by n and n goes as close to zero as possible. And this limit would approach then infinity. Um, the other way around, you could also say what happens if n goes towards infinity, then you would get uh, zero. And you could also ask, okay, what happens when n approaches five, then you would get just one over five. Uh, this is a very simple expression. But what we're going to do today is we're going to build an application with a graphical user interface that uh, you can just, you know, put in a um, variable into and you can put in an expression and a limit value and then you can get the result of this limit uh, using this application. For this, we're going to need a package called SymPy. So pip or pip3 install SymPy like this, like symbol and pi, like Python. And this is the package that will do the actual evaluation for us. And then we're also going to use the core Python package TK enter. So import TK enter as TK import SymPy as SP. Uh, and then we're going to build a simple graphical user interface. So the class limit calculator will have a constructor in which almost everything is going to happen. We're going to say first of all, self dot root is TK TK then self dot root will have a title, the title will be limit calculator. Then we're going to say self dot, uh, let's start with the labels, let's say we want to have first of all, the symbol itself. So are you going to use x or n or what are you going to use? So symbol underscore label is going to be equal to tk label with uh, self dot root as a parent and the text is going to be just symbol. And then we're going to use a grid layout. So we're going to say symbol label dot grid, the row, we're going to place this is zero, the column, we're going to place this is going to be equal to zero as well. And then we're going to have a padding x of two and a padding y of two, just so it looks a little bit better. Um, and what we can do already is we can say self root main loop. And we can actually just create the graphical user interface so we can check what it looks like in the end. So right now it's only this label here. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to add also a text field. So I'm going to say self dot symbol text is going to be equal to TK text self root. And then we're actually didn't we have entry, I think entry is more suited. TK entry self root, um, and then self dot symbol text grid row is going to be zero. Column is going to be one. And we're going to use padding x equals to padding y equals two. So it looks like this, very basic. And now we're going to copy that and we're going to do that two more times. So I'm going to take this copy, and then paste it two times and we're going to replace. Uh, let me just close this here. We're going to replace now the symbol here by um, by limit. So what limit is the symbol going to approach? Then also, of course, this is going to change to limit. And uh, here as well limit text, limit text. Um, and down here now we're going to do it actually more efficiently, we're going to say substitute symbol for expression. And then we only have to change this here expression. There you go. So this is 
Oh, actually, we need to also adjust the rows and columns. So of course, this is going to be row one, row one, row two, row two. And now it looks like this symbol limit expression. There you go. All right. So this is now just the input. Now what we also need is a button that will actually do the evaluation. So self dot um, calculate button is going to be TK button. It's going to be part of self root, and it's going to have the text on it, which is going to be calculate limit. And this button will have a command. And the command is going to be the function self dot calculate limit, which we need to define. So we're going to do that. Define calculate limit pass for now. Uh, and then we're going to use the same thing here, we're going to place this at row three, column zero, but we're going to add another keyword here column span equals two. So it uses both columns. This is what uh, this should not look like because we didn't change this to calculate button. There you go. Uh, so basically, this is now the user interface. And what we're going to add in the end is the results label. So we're going to say here self dot result label is going to be TK label self root is apparent, the text is going to be just a hyphen in the beginning. And we're going to pack this or we're going to grid layout this into the user interface by saying grid row is going to be four column is going to be zero column span is going to be two padding x is going to be two and padding y is going to be two. All right, so that should be the graphical user interface. And now the whole magic is going to happen in the calculate limit function, we basically just get the input and we process it, and then we display the result. Now, two things that I need to define here, just so they're defined in the init function, not somewhere else, is we're going to say the symbol is going to be none. And the limit is also going to be none, because we're going to use them here in the calculate limit function. All right, so what we're going to do now, first of all, is we're going to get the symbol from the text box. So from the entry, and we're going to do that by saying self dot sim is going to be equal to simpy. So sp dot symbols. And we're going to get self dot symbol text. Now I'm not sure if how do we do that here? Do we say get text? Or do we say get from 1.0? I think this is how we do it on TK intro, right? Not sure. Let's see if that works. Um, unexpected argument. Or do I just say get? Not sure about that. Let's let's just see what happens when I say get. Maybe we can do that right away. Self dot sim. What happens? Oh, no symbols given. Let's go with x. Okay, this works. Um, yeah, so if you have not an entry, but a text field, then you have to do get from 1.0 to end. But in the case of an entry, you just say get. So you get a symbol. And then what we do is we get the expression. So the expression is going to be equal to simpy limit, sp limit. Um, or no, sorry, this is the, the limit evaluation already. So what we do is we say self dot expression text dot get so we get the content of the expression text box or entry. And what we do here is in the case of a sum, this is something uh, that is a little bit of a trick here. If you have a sum expression, you have to call a do it in the end to actually evaluate it. So what we're going to do is we're going to enhance the expression um, by doing the following. We're going to say expression, whatever it is dot do it. If the word sum is in the expression. Otherwise, we're going to keep the expression as it is. All right, and then now with this expression, we're going to calculate the limit. So self dot limit is going to be simpy dot limit, the expression, the symbol, and the limit itself. So self dot limit text dot get. And then self dot result label config change the text to str self limit. That should be it. So let's see, let's say one half x going towards zero, and the expression is one divided by x. 
then the limit here two O's means infinity. If I say it goes to OO, it will tell me zero. If I say it goes to five, it will tell me one over five. Now let's see what happens if we use some more interesting expressions here. Um, first of all, what you can do here is you can use E and pi as well. So what you can do here is instead of saying pi, for example, you can just say pi, and then it will tell you it's one over pi. Uh, and this is not just the symbol pi, this is actually the value pi, because if I say sine of x, and x goes towards pi, I get zero, whereas if I say it goes to, I don't know, k, I would get sine of k, uh, I would get sine of k. Uh, same goes for uh, E, we can say ln of something ln of x and x approaches E, I have to use capital E for that, uh, then it would get one here. Uh, whereas if I say k again, I would get log of k. Uh, so let's try some interesting limits here, I wrote some down, let's go with one plus one over n to the power of n. Um, actually, this is the expression. And the limit, I think this has to go to infinity. Then we get e as a result. Yeah, this is the limit of this expression when n goes towards infinity is e. Um, and then you have also how do you do that with sums? Uh, let's say, for example, you want to calculate the limit of the expression when you when you have k from one to n, and the expression is one over k squared. So what you can do here is you can say n goes towards infinity, and the expression is the following sum, then you define the expression one over k to the power of two. And then we have the following um, conditions here or the following limits, k is the variable goes from one to n. And that is how you express that. And in this case, it's pi squared divided by six. So yeah, this is how you build a limit calculator with a graphical user interface in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.